Um, I actually looked up the binary code for 69 once, but I didn't, I didn't put that in there. Yeah, um, I used to be in a band. My first band, I guess. Well, okay, I guess we had some names, but we weren't like really a band at that point. My first real band was called 69th Amendment. I like it. Yeah, I like it. What would the 69th Amendment be? Um, gosh, I, I think at that, we were young, so it was like the right to like rock or something stupid like that. I think we said at that point, I don't know. The cringe. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guest. My guest today is a singer, songwriter, creator of sound and software, and a member of Friends of the Channel, the Pigeon Hat Collective, as well as a member of the House of R Band. Um, you've, my guest has gone from near tragedy to living her best life. Uh, please welcome to the channel, Aubrey Digital. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Done. Thanks. No, I'm just kidding. That's into the interview. Right? Yes, thanks for coming. Uh, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me. Clink. No problem. First of all, welcome to the channel, like I said. And stick around, because you're in for a treat. Aubrey has a new album out called Hello World, which we're going to uh, hear a few songs from upstairs in room six after this. Uh, by the way, if you want to be on the channel, hit the link down in the description. It will... Uh, reach me basically and let me know I reviews interviews all of it it's also a way that you can uh, support the channel if you want number one by subscribing down there and number two buy some merch show the world you like music and room six and all that jazz mm, question number one okay. your favorite city is LA really is that did I say that somewhere yes you did where did I say that I believe Instagram interesting why? Well, I mean, LA is pretty huge. I guess it's, I, I, I wouldn't, you probably need to narrow it down more. I really like Santa Monica. Um, I really like West Hollywood and regular Hollywood, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm a big weather person. So, okay, I could see that. So, SoCal has like the best weather. Fair enough. I grew up in SoCal, so... I'm, I'm aware. I, I lived in San Diego for a total of eight years. And that place, 15 minutes in any direction, you're in a different climate. Right. I loved it. Um, I lived in the college area mostly, but it was like, I want to go to the beach. Okay, go to the beach. I want to go to Tijuana. Okay. I want to go to the mountains. I want to go to the desert. Um, it, it, I miss it, but I don't miss uh, the prices and I don't miss the humidity. Especially La Jolla, La Jolla, as we called it. Yeah. <sighs> La Jolla. Anyway. So, your album is called Hello World and you are programmer correct so that was on purpose i assume that is very on purpose first of all clever this is your debut album right correct so i like it i like it a lot is there any sort of um in the album or in the notes or in the artwork or anything is there any sort of binary jokes or anything but not actually there no? should have been um i actually looked up the binary code for 69 once, but I didn't. I didn't put that in there. Good ones are, ones are, ones are. <laughs> yeah, um, I used to be in a band. My first band, I guess. Well, okay, I guess we had some names, but we weren't like really a band at that point. My first real band was called 69th Amendment. I like it. Yeah, I like it. What would the 69th Amendment be? Um, gosh, I, I think at that we were young, so <laughs> it was like the right to like rock or something stupid like that. I think we said at that point, I don't know. The cringe. <laughs> right, the cringe. Yes. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned near tragedy in your, the intro. Uh, you had a near-death experience. Do you, do you feel comfortable talking about it at all? Sure. Cool. How did a near-death experience kind of make you realize, like, hey, time to waste. I need to do what I want. Well, um, it was my birth month about... 10 or 15 days before I was going to turn 18 and I was um, seeing someone at the time 
but I was at home that day drinking with friends like I often did and I got a call and she said please come to this party please come to this party and oh, no. and I was like no that's a bad idea I'm like really messed up and all my friends were like no that's a really bad idea you're really messed up and then it's bad when your friends are telling you no <laughs> right and then after they all left I was I got up I called her back and I was like hey I can come out there and I'm in I'm in, in what's the word invulnerable Right. Yeah. Um, and so I went out there and uh, got in some stupid fight with her or something. And oh. um, yeah, when I left, I it was out in the country north, no, sorry, south of McCook, Nebraska, my hometown, um, southwest Nebraska. And I went into a ditch and I woke up a week later from a coma with like a big brace around my neck. Jeez. Yeah, it was wild. Did you have any uh, memory loss or anything? Oh, real bad. Oh, I mean, oh, really? Okay. So I actually had something called brain shearing. I've heard of this. Which I like don't totally understand, but it's like the nerve endings that connect in the back of your brain were like... You basically pulled a muscle in your brain, kind of. So the connection. it was bad. They didn't think I was going to be able to like walk or talk again. They didn't, they thought I was going to be a vegetable. So look at you now. The, yeah. The no, first thing they told my mom was that I wasn't going to make it. Ah, oh, jeez. And then they said, okay, well, if they do make it, they're going to be a vegetable, like without a doubt. And honestly, when I came home, I was pretty far gone. Like I couldn't play my guitar. Um, I like, my mom like advised me against going up and down the stairs and stuff because right. I was just like in such poor shape. And, How like, long was the coma? Only a few days I was in the coma. Okay. But I mean, it took me months, probably years, before I got back my like cognitive capacity to like hundred okay. percent. It, was, it wasn't a muscle atrophy thing. It was a literally making the synapses work for you. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was pretty crazy. Well, I'm glad you're here. In all respects of that. That uh, phrase. Uh, going back to the programming thing real quick, I actually know more than one person who's involved in the programming or the IT thing, uh, myself included, who also does the music. Mm -hmm. and, and I was wondering, it, what do you think is the corollary there between, like, because at first glance, programming and music don't seem to be in the same kind of realm, right. but I feel personally that the thought processes are the same. Oh, yeah. I mean... Everything's really connected, but at well, some yes. at some level. But like um, programming and music, they're 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 very similar to me um, because, gosh, if you know if I had, there's times where this comes this specific issue like comes to my brain. Um, so so uh, the reason it's not coming so great right now is because I'm, I'm pretty rusty on the program right now I just put out this album I just recorded this album and I noticed you, you're, you haven't blogged lately about programming so. so right yeah I've been kind of um, yeah not not doing as much as I should be doing in that avenue lately I've been focusing on the music and that's okay right you know I figured, yeah. you know everything in its time that is why I have a line of merch that I, I, I have a few pieces of that says make music not excuses because sometimes I have to remind myself to turn around from the editing computer and go to the guitar wall or go to the piano or the drums and do something musically because otherwise I forget why I'm here, you know, why I'm doing this. But, um, you know, as far as the connection, one of the things that first drew me to web development and, and, and such was designing. You know, I enjoy designing and so like I went to school for I got a front end certification from okay. CSN, and that was over um, something called React, which is a front end technology developed by Facebook in like 2013 or something like that. So basically, like the difference between front end and back end for mm -hmm. people that like don't know is like front end is what the user sees. Like when you click on a website and you go there, all the stuff that you click on and like what colors and the way everything looks, that is the front end. The back end deals with the database and, 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 and things of that nature and, and, and structuring all that. So, I mean, I think they're connected in that just that there's a lot of that to music, you know? The front end is like what I said. Like, okay, so like when I play songs, people rarely get 
from them what I am putting across in, in, in right. a sense. The songwriter's dilemma, yeah. Right. So it's like what, like, even when it comes to, like, talking about, like, what genre I play, I'm like, well, the things, the influences that go into my brain, the things that are cooking up and that are making the music aren't, like, what comes out and what people see. Right. And so that, that's that's one thing that's kind of similar. One of the hardest things that I've had to deal with as, a, you know, a performer in the past is I always, is, okay, I got a show. And I know, I know the venue, I know the bands on the bill, it's going to be great. And I build it up in my head. And I have this moment in my head where I come out and the crowd goes nuts. And, it, you know, it, and, and it never happens like that. <laughs> Not ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so I have all that in my head. And then I, right before the show, literally right before, you'll find me pacing, managing my expectations and, and just reminding myself, just, no, no, come on, come on, come on. If that was the case, you wouldn't be playing here. You'd be right. playing, you know, the, the, the stadium or something. Um, and, and that tends to bring me back to reality a little bit so that anything cool that happens is a bonus. Right. The same thing goes for every video I make. Same thing goes for every interview I do. It's regardless of how big the act is or whatever, they come in and they say, can I use your bathroom? They say, you know, um, you know, uh, you got a mirror. I can check, you know, my makeup or whatever. Uh, all the stuff. It, they're just people. And I feel like with programming, if you don't program if in some way, shape, or form, you don't, you know, some people still think that hacking means all the numbers and letters are going by as you enter right. the internet, you know? So I just was wondering, though, uh, you don't do any, like, uh, pedal modding or any of that hardware type stuff, right? What do you mean exactly? Well, like with computers, do you how, do you build computers as well, or I do you, don't? No. So that's it's what I was saying. It's our software stuff. Right? Your, so, your software, not hardware. Right, right. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to, if you don't mind, ask you some some kind of my usual interview questions. Okay. Sorry, but number one, it, you've already kind of answered is how would you define your musical style? You know, the elevator pitch, basically. But you, how would you describe it? You know, funny side note, that's something I had to do for my programming class was an elevator pitch. I hate elevator pitches, but they're so important. Right. Um, so my music, I think it mostly sounds like rock with folk in it and a little bit of like reggae, maybe sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but so like with my album... Half of the songs I wrote when I was like 15 years old or younger. You're a different person. And half of the songs I just wrote like this year or in the last few years. Mm -hmm. So um, my influences on like It Don't Really Matter, that was like country influenced and and classic rock influenced. And a lot of my stuff back then was more taking from, you know, music like, you know, uh, The Beatles or um, I really like the first CD I ever had in my car when I turned 16 that I cruised around to was Creedence Clearwater Revival Greatest Hits. Wow. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of to, to, to glean off that and, and to influence you. And you could hear you could hear like one song from them and say, oh, well, that's this. And then hear another song and like, oh, wait, that's also this. Right. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I would say. A good a good name for your music uh, genre, if I may, would be acoustic based fluid genre. What does that mean? Basically, it's whatever you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> but like like because I, I I used to tell people I wrote uh, acoustic based rock and roll love songs because it covered everything I did, you know. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Is you could just say like it's fluid. It's, you know, you never know what e- you're gonna get. Eclectic. From it. Yeah. But if you had to do an elevator pitch for your music, eclectic is, is can sometimes have a negative connotation. Yeah. Whereas if you say it's you know uh, multi influence or something like that, so right, just an idea. Uh, a lot of people like to say indie rock, and I'm like, that's fine, but like, what does indie really mean? Right. Like like, I I have heard you sing before, and I would even go so far as to say. But alternative back when it was alternative in the '90s, there's there's elements of that in there, okay. you know, uh, because just because it doesn't fit a lot of stand of uh, stereotypical radio norms, 
in some way, but in other ways, it's very it's very pleasant to, li- to listen to, you know. Thank you. Um, and and also there are some surprises in there and stuff. So I always enjoyed that about alternative music was that sometimes they would be so alternative they wouldn't even put the song title in the song, you know. And, yeah. and they they it, you would just hear like, is that a, are they playing a saw? What is that? You know, and just all sorts of weird stuff. So uh, moving on, let's talk. Well, we we talked about influences, you know, the Beatles and Creedence Clearwater and stuff. But I was wondering, if you're listening to music now to motivate you to whatever, to write new music or to get, get up and go to work, right. um, if you, what is your, your current musical influences? So, I get mean, you I have so many. So, really, like, mm-hmm. that's kind of like why, why, I, why I brought up earlier that, like, my older music sounds like these, like, classic rock bands that, like, I grew up on and listened to a lot around, like, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I mean, I there for a long time, not so much anymore. But I mean, I was listening to a lot of gangster rap music. Hello, and I mean, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, you know, I guess some not gangster rap music like hip hop. Like I just, I, I love the way hip hop music sounds, and so that's like a huge influence to me. And mm-hmm. I try to, the, I, you know, I, I don't know if anybody would call it rapping, but I mean, I. Feel like I borderline rap sometimes, and I'd say more spoken worded. Okay, possibly. You know, what, however people want to categorize. Like well, I said, just that's what where, I've heard. That's where it comes back to what I put out isn't what other people pick up from it sometimes. Um, but that that definitely is where it comes in that a lot of my music is like lyric driven. Mm-hmm. Like they're not the most complex chord progressions. But there's a million words in the song because I like to say things and do wordplay and there's a little bit of wordsmithing going on and I definitely recognize that um, I I enjoy that as a as a lyric, as a songwriter and a lyricist to being able to sometimes cram a lot into the same amount of bars as a as whereas the next one I'm more you know crooning it almost so. right. um, all right so moving on now. Real briefly, we'll talk about the House of Our Band. How long have you been playing with Hal? And also, how long have you been involved with the Pigeon Head Collective? I have been involved on a, in an official capacity with Pigeon Hat since maybe November or December. I forget when our first collective was. Shout out to Trash Animals. Yes, definitely a shout out. They've been on the show. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've been a part of the collective for yeah a few months now. We've done one collective show, um, a concert that I am putting on in a couple of weeks at the Happy Earth Market here in Henderson. Yeah. There will be Opossum and Chris Mendoza and myself from the Vision Hat Collective. So um, yeah, trying to you know do as much with that they're, they're taking pictures right now I, i'm going to be in them at some point but you know work schedules sure right on um as far as house of R. how long have i been playing with house of R? yeah i mean i've been playing at his concerts like doing my own music for a few years now okay but i've only been in the band with him for two three weeks oh really oh yeah okay because i mean you just Fit right in the pocket, you know. You, you're there, um, so I just assumed. Yeah. No, I was. What really happened was I, I was at one of the singer songwriter showcases, and he had posted on Facebook that he needed a bass player, and I was like, "Hey, Hal, like I don't have a bass or a bass amp or anything, but like if you do, I can play bass for you." <laughs> that is the story of like every bass player that's ever joined a band. Is like, well, no, we got a bass and no one to play it. All right, I guess like, so. oh yeah, I can play. It. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but he didn't have a bass. And he That's said, awesome. He said, you know what? You play keys. How about you play keys for my band? And then if we don't have a bass player, you can just play the bass notes on the keys. And then when we get a bass player, you can just do more of the key stuff. And uh, yeah, that's how I, I, I got into that situation. And I'm really, really grateful to... Rayman to Zarek from the Doors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> play the bass. I'm very grateful to Hal for everything. I mean, yeah. playing with that band is a, an honor and a privilege to us. The other musicians that I play with, Jeff, Alex, Rick when he's there, um, Casey Stickley, I mean, mm. so many talented musicians that I, I just feel grateful to be a part of the lineup and able to like rock out and do my thing with them. Right. I have to say thank you to Hal as well. Um, those of you that don't know, 
Hal was nice enough. He's been on the channel as well. And um, shortly after being on the channel, he uh, started doing his showcase at the Artisan Hotel. And now it's at the Strat inside Remix Lounge. He was nice enough to ask if I wanted to come, you know, live stream it for the channel, as well as do reviews of the showcase, as well as giving me the opportunity to meet people and say, hey, you want to do an interview? Bada bing. So, suddenly I am very busy. I'm going to be very busy with interviews. Thank you, Hal. Um, my family thanks you because the kitchen will never get dirty. <laughs> it always gets clean. Um, right on. Well, we're almost, we're almost done. I know, I know, you know, we're, we're a little bit of time. Um, two more questions. One, what is the average speed of a swallow carrying anything up? Just kidding. It's a Monty Python joke. Sorry. So, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you about gear. So of the gear you play, what is yours? Um, what do you currently rock? Do you have a Martin guitar? So I have a Martin acoustic guitar. I have a Fender Telecaster electric nice. guitar. I don't have an amplifier, um, except for I have a Bose S1, which is like kind of a, a travel PA system. It's fine. As long as it plugs in. That's what I use. So what I mostly do, I have a pretty um, unorthodox setup going on. So instead of running an amplifier per se, you know, like a Fender or a um, um, Marshall, or I used to have an Orange, but I sold it. Um, but so yeah, I use my computer basically. So I run uh -huh. everything through Logic and mm -hmm. then just go Logic to my PA system. You know, just so you know, uh, Fender Frontman 25R amp, which is what I have in room six, mm -hmm. Would do the job for most gigs, to be honest. It's hundred bucks guitar center usually. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, it was at like the time it. I bought it years ago, and it has you know it, you can um, I've used it. I have a uh, AB pedal with it. You know, it's got yeah, headphone jack. Nice. It's got you know. So uh, just an idea, because then you can have some, any sound person can mic it. Right. You know, uh, there's also you know the headphone jack can go out to, as well to the line or to the. Um, the system so it, it's just an idea um and, and it's got a um story it's got a button to push to go to you know clean or dirty so there's okay, that thank you no problem you can't have mine but i was gonna ask too yeah right last question you made it hey let's pretend we're talking to little aubrey okay now not not little aubrey as in um near-death experience like little stevie mm. But let's pretend, what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. I do this at the end of every interview. Okay. What do you wish is one, th what is one thing that you wish someone had told you? No, correction. What is one thing you would like to tell you, young you about getting into the music business? What do you wish someone had told you? That it's more important to network than you think it is. It's another thing that correlates between programming and music. Yeah. I have no problem spending all day long programming, but it's not going to get yep. me a job because I'm not talking to people. Right. Those, those trade shows and everything, they're important. Right. You know, that lanyard, it could be your gateway to bigger and better things. I've been to a few and I've been, I actually used to work at a company that um, built trade uh, show booths and okay. I, I was on, a, I was in a marketing, uh, on the marketing team. And, been a few and it's amazing the amount of business that gets done both in the trade show and out there where they're smoking right <laughs> like a lot of the big deals happen when they're smoking out there but um and the trade show is just for lack of a better term lipstick and mascara it's like here's here's who we are as a company we're pretty look at us we're shiny right. you know we're impressive uh, especially at ces <laughs> but yeah no um you, you know the term silo siloing like when different departments kind of we all have our own little bubble and we don't communicate with each other about what's going on with this particular project. It's an IT thing a lot. Okay. Um, and, and each of us is our own little silo. Okay. It can, and what happens, that's why uh, it can happen with like game developers and, and um, software developers where, oh, that's why there's, it's been delayed or that's why uh, there's a zero day attack or something because we didn't communicate with each other throughout the whole process. I feel like what you're talking about is exactly that programmers yeah literally put on headphones and I can program for hours seriously and I look up oh I forgot to eat you know <laughs> right you know um, I do the same thing with editing I'll be honest <laughs> yeah because you know 
like like uh, I, I think you and I both are are goal driven in that I feel better when I got work done, you know, right. as opposed to before when I know all the work I have to do. There's it's almost depressing. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. So without a doubt. So what you would tell future uh, little you, future you would say, network, network better. Um, um, find, find your niche and, and be unapologetically you. Yes. And don't worry about what people think as much, but I feel like that's such a, everybody would say that I think going back. But not everybody lives it. And not everybody actually means the platitudes that they say. Right. And it's so hard to, I, I'm, I'm just as guilty of a lot of it. Imposter syndrome, you know, all of it, doubt. Once a week, I have to tell myself, I have to remind myself why I'm doing the channel. Right. It's certainly not all the money I'm making. It's certainly not the, you know, the instant fame and the, you know, whatever. I appreciate all my subscribers, by the way. Thank you very much. And all the patrons. But you have to, yeah, you have to be able, able to look at yourself honestly and be like, this is who I am and I'm okay with it. This is what I put out, and I'm okay with it. Right. I won't, you want to get better, of course. You want to always improve, but you have to be willing to just say, "That's the best I can do at the moment. I'm done. Like I'm signing the painting. I'm done. I'm not messing with it anymore. Because if I focus all my energy on this one thing, if I if I'm never satisfied, then I'm never going to finish all the things. Absolutely. And that is such a hard thing for a lot of artists. Um, I feel like that's why a lot of artists will have, they'll come out, they'll have a hit, maybe an album of hits, and they'll just disappear because suddenly they got busy, they got successful, and they're like, they shut down because they, they're like, ah, I don't know what to do now right? because I now I have stuff and options to do. Um, and that's, that, it always breaks my heart a little bit when I, I hear something like, they're going to they're gonna make, and then they get big, and they're like, "What happened? Right? What happened?" So yeah, find your niche. Don't be afraid to be in that niche. And um, what was the other thing? <laughs> uh, network. <laughs> yeah, network. Absolutely. I mean, t connecting with people. As a person who, and, and my, many creatives, I think are very. Um, now the word escapes me. Um, mm introverted there you go and um, I am definitely guilty of that and it really helps me to just get out of my zone because the more that you reach out to people the, m the more you're gonna be surprised by by what can come from doing so you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying very much so um, and, and yeah all the magic happens outside your comfort zone all of it absolutely like yeah, starting, like, your comfort zone is important, of course, but you got to be willing to go out and then come back to it, and then go out, and, and eventually it gets a little bigger and, or it gets to a different level. So. Right. All right, that's it. We're off our soapbox. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for coming Thank on the show. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Stick around. We're going to have a few songs from Aubrey upstairs in room six. And uh, in the meantime, remember to be amazing. And yeah, thanks for being a part of Room 6. Shall we say goodbye? For temporarily goodbye? Yes, we shall. Ta-ta. Goodbye. My name is Aubrey Digital, and this song is called Into the Air. sky so blue I can see a future too I can see another way conscious now with what I do I won't be upon no more 
I won't waste another day Ready now to explore This great unknown I'm not afraid I'm lazy, yes I am aware But trust me baby, I don't care It's just not worth the energy Dispensing these thoughts into the air This song is called Metaphor for My Love. Since when is everything just not like it seems? Don't question my logic, I'm too lost in this dream. I'm up all night, worried about the things I can't change. It's been too long to find out there's no coming of age. It's all in your mind, it's all in your head Maybe you're right, rock and roll's dead Don't turn out the lights just quite yet It's our turn to shine Two timing, what are the odds? I caught the flu, rhyming Now I'm distraught and no I won't Find it down on the rock so I'll just keep Climbing up past the top to watch you fall Have you heard an informative word on the man? Cause he's circling the block about as fast as he can I'm through running, it always brings me back where I am who knew money could get you in this tide of a jam? And all this is just a metaphor for my love And my pain's not identical to no one's I'm this close to finishing Give me a dose, some stronger medicine This white noise, it's been keeping me awake Keep your poise, don't stop, we're too close to break and you're supposed to make the right choices But I can't tune out these deafening voices These voices These voices In my head This next song is called Refresh. Why aren't the words easier to find? 
Oftentimes they hide Often they are right underneath my tongue And tonight I'm especially lost for thought I'm especially overwrought I'm excessive as in a whole lot To deal with, to accept Like my whole concept Every day they say I'm inept No I'm not, I'm the best Then I left How I wish this was the final stretch But it's only an early sketch Patience running thin to my ears in stress I wake up again, I just hit refresh It's the same damn page and I feel like less I feel like death and I feel like sunshine and rainbows I guess could be so much worse I'm in pain, I confess Aren't we all? This next song is called Breeze. I don't know. I don't honestly even care anymore. Just the breeze right through my hair. What's in store? It's not my business till it's there I can't afford My sanity's my only prayer For making it till old age in this world Minimizing on the cold days in this world Need the sun, need the warmth, need the ocean Need balance, need love, need freedom And I've seen some Seen a lot to be honest but we've just begun to scratch the surface what's my age no what's my purpose what's it mean what's the point of it all i don't know i don't honestly even care anymore it's just the breeze right through my hair what's in store it's not my business till it's there i can't afford my sanity's my only prayer But it doesn't have to be Life's wonders are all plenty Each morning I can't believe I wake up, it's a dream I almost lost everything Now I am back to green Back to my regularly scheduled program Been holding my tongue But now I am done Done saying things when I don't mean them With one ounce of the truth right behind you there's another way to better fine tune to fit with the scheme of things to take in your scenery to clear out your mind and just breathe oh so easily to manifest dreams that's the theme that's the reason we are gathered here today in the shade right beneath the trees i don't know i don't honestly even care anymore it's just the breeze right through my hair What's in store? It's not my business till it's there I can't afford My sanity is my only prayer eh, eh. This song's called Can't Do It By Myself. Don't this sound just like something you heard a million times before? But if you listened all those times, I urge you to take one more. Barely standing on my feet, but I'm grateful to do so. 
Cause it could have been much worse I swear you don't even know I swear you don't even know and it don't even matter We've all been through shit, we've all been through disaster Society sick, tell you smile for the camera If it wasn't so cold, I might move out to Canada Won't play the role as we jump through the calendar Selling my soul, life's of a higher caliber If you're feeling powerless, strengths and numbers I'm telling you if you're real over this Strengths and numbers, I'm telling you I can't do it by myself It's so hard for me to reach out I can't do it by myself It's so hard for me to reach out I'm such a loner I swear I'll never change Always the closer So hard to get away This work seems fruitless And so impossible On country cruises I used to toss it all I used to throw away All of the time I had And now I'm so afraid I'll never get it back Afraid I'll always be stuck way behind the pack Nobody's calling me except to sell their crap But do I ever dial? So no, it goes both ways I'm a forever child, lost in the Milky Way Not trapped in the wrong body, just trapped in a body you see Trapped by your perception of me when I just wanna be free I can't do it by myself It's so hard for me to reach out I can't do it by myself It's so hard for me to reach out Thank Aubrey Digital for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you'd like to check out more of her music, there's a link down in the description for her new album, which is called Hello World. In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, use the social media link down in the description for all the ways to get a hold of me. It's also how you can support the channel, such as buying merch, room6.shop. I've got a Patreon page, Patreon-only content, and I also have a couple CDs of my own out. Um, in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up there. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it really would make a difference. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Goodbye.